All right, we're going to do another tomato review today on this tomato right here. And this is called the Venus Bustichin. I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce that. It's German, apparently, or something like that. And uh, the correct spelling will be in the title and description. So you can figure out how to say it for yourself. For me, I just got to get through these tomato reviews. I got hundreds of tomatoes out here to review. And my battery's not lasting on my camera, so I can only do about three at a pop. And it takes me like three hours to charge the battery. And it's like, it's taking forever to do tomato reviews. So I, I can't put a lot of time into like trying to pronounce it and then trying to do all the research beforehand. Again, there will be information in the description on this tomato. Uh, and also on a website where you can look up more about the tomato variety. This video is just basically going to focus on the flavor and my opinion and where do I rate it or not rate it, that kind of a thing. So that's basically the purpose of the video. It's not supposed to give you all the details. All that stuff will be down in the description. You can find it there. So anyway, here it is, the Venus Bustichin. Bustichin. I would imagine that's how you say it. So let's move that off to the side. Let's take one of these tomatoes and give her a cut in half. Now, as you can see, let's show you first the tomato variety. I, I was pretty infatuated with it. I like that little nipple on the bottom. So I was kind of uh, turned on by that, actually. And so I wanted to um, give this one a go this year. They do crack a little. If you get heavy rain, they will crack. But you can see it's a quite a beautiful tomato. It's like an elongated risentrope tomato. Kind of like what it looks like, but it's the shape of these tomatoes are kind of strange looking. They're, they're pendulant shaped, if you look at it. I don't know if I need to back you out or what. They're kind of like pendulant shaped, so that's what it looks like. And um, I'm going to try cutting it across this way. Maybe I'll cut it long ways. Let's see. Let's give one a cut open. Being it's a long tomato, I usually go with the tomato. Cut it right down the middle. Usually go with the tomato so you can see it. So I cut it perpendicular to the rib. And uh, you can definitely see that's a gorgeous looking tomato on the inside. It's just really fascinating. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Very, very nice. I'll show you the other one. Very gorgeous. Seeds are fully attached to the rind. Don't see much wilding in there, but there is some wilding inside the core, which tells me it's not a commercial grade tomato. But that's that right there. So let's do a bricks. Okay, it's reading about 500 bricks. So it's not terribly sweet, but it's not terribly low. Five is a pretty good number to be with uh, most tomatoes. Uh, cherry tomatoes, smaller tomatoes like this, I like to see them a little higher. Six would have been nice. Six and a half would have been really nice. But uh, five, it should be average. So let's, uh, I could be wrong though. We'll see. I'm going to taste it right now. So let's give that a go. Um, it's not bad of a tomato. The flavor on it was kind of... Um, it was accented very, very intensely. It wasn't like a heavily intense accented flavor, tomato flavored tomato, but uh, it wasn't bad. Let me do the other half of this and then we'll go over the chart and see where we stand with it. Okay, <clears throat> back you out a little bit. All right, so with this tomato, let's start off with the sweetness on it. Uh, it wasn't terribly sweet. I'm going to say it was probably around 20, 22 on the sweetness. Wasn't wasn't nothing to brag about. Normally with your sweetness, you probably want around 30. That's a good sweet uh, sweetness range for me. When I'm telling you 20, 22, it's below that range. That's about the sweetness. Tanginess was a little higher. Tanginess was probably about 28 on the tangy. On the tangy part, it wasn't quite 30. But it was probably somewhere around 28. Again, with the tanginess in combination with the sweetness, you probably want to be in that sweet spot of around 30 with tanginess. So we were a little bit below on the tanginess, but it was still there. With the seeds, you really get that delivery of it. Now, the tomato flavor was pretty good. It was pronounced. 
it was, wasn't was super dominant, but it was pretty pronounced. And on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the highest, I would say that the tomato flavor intensity was probably maybe around a 4. I should actually do it the other way around. I should tell you uh, 10 being the highest and just kind of go up that way. It's just, I don't know. But the fl tomato flavor was... was uh, was a little bit above average. So if you if one was the highest, this would probably be a four instead of like right in the middle. So it, was, it had a nice tomato flavor to it. And uh, the delivery of that tomato flavor was pretty nice. Now, as far as moisture goes, now the moisture part of it, um, from a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna say it was a little bit better than 50%. I'm gonna say uh, one being the highest, Say we'll say that, um, the tomato moisture was probably like a four, you know, or if I said 10 was the highest, it'd be like a six. I, I, I got to figure out which direction I want to go with that. I might do it the other way around. I'm going to read for this chart and then I'm going to put it in a way where I can just give you a, because I get confused sometimes. I go back and forth and I don't mean to say that, but I got to draw this chart off so I can look at it and say, okay, this is where it was. That's where it makes it easier. But if, if you're going to say one on a moisture was really moist, wet, almost dripping as soon as you touch it, this would be a little bit higher than 50%. So it'd probably be like a four with one being the highest number. So it was a little bit more moist than right in the middle. And undertones. Undertones, it did have an undertone to it. It had a kind of a strange, kind of an earthy undertone to it, but something else to it too. Almost like it had like another vegetable flavor inside of the tomato. Maybe a slight celery flavor. It had some kind of a, a an odd undertone flavor to it that was, um, you know, it comes in as, the undertones come in as an aftertaste. It's after you eat the tomato, uh, you're just about swallowing it, and then it, it comes out right there. You'll get this undertone flavor, and that sometimes hangs around on the back of your tongue for a little while. And you could you try to grab what it might be, and it's really hard to do that one sometimes because it's, it's, it's a very short-lived moment when it comes to these undertones. But uh, it did have an undertone, and the, the, the intensity of that undertone, I would probably say... Uh, I would probably say if, you know, uh, in this case, one being the lowest, I would probably say this was like a three. Um, it was like a three, maybe even four. It was pretty intense. Had a pretty uh, pretty strong intensity to the undertone this. Uh, Ten on, on the undertone would be, once you get past five, in my opinion, with the undertones, that's super, that's matching and paralleling with the flavor of the tomato. So the, if the if the undertones are out flavoring the tomato, that's really awkward. You don't ever want to have an undertone higher than five. So for me to tell you three, you know, it's a pretty pronounced undertone with this tomato, but not enough to offset the actual flavor of the tomato. It wasn't that that intense, that strong. But there was something going on there, guys. There was definitely something going on. So. That's really it. I mean, that's that's about all I can say about this tomato. Again, I'll give you one more quick look. You can see it's got that little nipple on the bottom. I like that. I like those little nipples. And uh, it's a pretty good producer. The plant hit probably around six feet tall. Blight started kicking in at that point. Pretty good producer. You know, I, I'd probably say I'm probably going to end up with um, 50, 60 tomatoes off of this variety. Most of them are still green right now. But I'm taking them off early this year because of the birds. And uh, we're just getting them out of the way because uh, the birds are coming in and they're blasting my tomatoes. So, But anyway, that's it. That's your tomato review for the, um, what was this called? No, Venus Bustichin. Uh, um, and just so you know, too, this year I'm, I'm buying a lot of... Um, uh, foreign varieties of tomatoes. I'm ordering tomato seeds from overseas. So I am getting a lot of these strange varieties from overseas. So there, a lot of these are not domestic tomatoes. These are tomatoes from other countries. And again, whatever information I can scrub on it, uh, you'll be able to read about it in the description. I will also leave links to the seeds that will be available for this variety in the description below. You got to give me a little bit of time to process the tomatoes as well as I'll build the web page for it, and then uh, you can click that link and be able to buy tomatoes there. So you got you got to give it a little time, a few days to a week, maybe two weeks from when you see this video. 
I'll have a page up and running. You'll be able to get seed for it. All right, so that was it. That was your tomato review for the Venus Bustichin. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.